privileged to bring a special lady up to the stage. During all of our time traveling across this great nation, we have met many great patriots. And we have also met a lot of our military families, our Blue Star families who currently have someone serving at home or abroad. And unfortunately, we've met Gold Star families. Those are the families who their family members have paid the ultimate sacrifice and given their lives in protection of our freedom. I had the honor and privilege of meeting one of these Gold Star moms, and we have her traveling with the Tea Party Express. Her son was the first Navy SEAL to die in Iraq, and where he laid down his rifle, she picked it up. She formed America's Mighty Warriors, and she travels across this nation supporting our military and speaking up on their behalf. It is my honor and privilege to present a blessing to this nation. Please welcome to the stage, Gold Star Mom, Debbie Lee. much. It is an honor to be back in this part of the country and there are so many amazing patriots that are here and I love your spirit up here. I know you're fighting a tough, tough bat battle in this state but there are warriors here who continue to fight. And ladies and gentlemen, just as Kay said, I have dedicated my life to making sure our men and women in the military know they're loved, they're appreciated, that their sacrifice and this service to this country does not go unnoticed. You know, ladies and gentlemen, we woke up this morning and we enjoyed the freedoms that we have because we do live in America. And it's those freedoms that God has given to us. But it's our men and women in the military who have fought, who've sacrificed and given so much for those freedoms that we enjoy. Served, would you please stand up so that we can thank you for all that you've given for our freedoms? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Come on, all, every one of you, keep standing. Keep standing. Thank you. God bless all of you. Ladies and gentlemen, look around because these are America's true heroes. You know, I think we use that word too flippantly. We call rock stars heroes, and we call movie stars, and football players, and basketball players, oh, they're my hero. But these men and women that just stood are America's real heroes. They have given so much for us, and I will be forever grateful. There isn't anything I wouldn't do for you or for your families, because ladies and gentlemen, the families sacrifice too. So if you're one of the family members, thank you for what you've given. August 2nd, 2006 was a day that forever changed my life. That was the day that we were notified that my youngest son, Mark Allen Lee, had been killed in action. I started to get phone calls from Mark's buddies in Iraq that night, and we began to piece together the heroic story of what this young man had done. You see, they had been fighting for two hours that morning in Ramadi, Iraq. You may remember Ramadi in 2006. It was a terrible place. Most of our casualties were coming out of Ramadi. That morning had been 115, 120 degrees as they fought that intense firefight for two hours. Mark carried the big gun, so he carried anywhere from 150 to 180 pounds in addition to his own weight. How you do that in that extreme temperature for two hours is beyond me. There were four seals that were on the rooftop. Mark's buddy Ryan had been severely injured and they could tell by looking at him it didn't look good. They didn't know if he'd survive the next few moments. The bullets had hit his weapon and he had severe shrapnel injuries to the head. As Ryan fell to the ground, two of the other seals that were there quickly fell to their knees to help Ryan. This young man made the choice to stand up into the direct line of fire, hoping the enemy would focus on him and fire on him. He could provide cover to sneak the medic up to the roof. The medic got up there and he took one look at Ryan and said, we've got to get him out of here immediately or there's no chance for survival. So a second time, Mark made the choice again to stand up into the direct line of fire to provide cover so they could get down off the roof. 
they all successfully got down and they sent Ryan off for medical attention. And they climbed back in their Bradleys and they headed back to the base. I'm proud to tell you that base was named Camp Mark Lee in his memory. And ladies and gentlemen, we have watched our Navy SEALs do some things that at times seem superhuman. But that was Mark's final gift to me, it was his teammates. And I know these young men well. I know when they got back to that base, they were exhausted physically and emotionally. And they got in there and they started to rip their gear off. Most of them were convinced Ryan had died by then, that he wasn't going to make it. And they got some water to refresh themselves. And the chief came in. He said, we just found 30 of the insurgents that just attacked us. And without hesitation, Mark said, roger that, let's go get them. So they climbed in their Bradleys, and they headed back to that God-forsaken place. They cleared several houses, and they went in the last house Mark would be in. Cleared the bottom of the house, and they started to proceed up the steps. And they heard Mark yell, on me! And the guys knew that Mark was saying, I'm going to take the lead on this one. You guys follow me. And as they went up those steps, they drew fire through a window. And for the last and final time, again, Mark made the choice to turn into that line of fire. He willingly gave his life defending his buddies. But ladies and gentlemen, he didn't do that just for his buddies. He did that for every one of you that are here today. He did that for everyone in America. Because he believed in what America was. He had that same vision that our founding fathers had for what this country should be. And each one of you who stood up, each one of you who fought and sacrificed and have given so much to make sure we keep those founding principles and the values that we have in America. And I have stood by this last year and watched that man up at our Capitol who says he loves our troops. He sends his wife and Jill Biden out on this campaign to raise awareness. And they go to baby showers and they do fun little you know, photo ops and greet our troops. And yet he doesn't give them rules of engagement that let them be successful. He decreases their budget, he increases their medical premiums. This is not a man who loves our troops or even loves America. And I will not stand by any longer and watch that man destroy this country and dishonor our troops. Yeah. Mark and his teammates had a choice that day. They'd gone back to the base. They had done their mission for the day. I've been over to Camp Mark Lee. I know on the other side of that base is a Marine base, and if they'd asked me, I'd have said, go find some Marines who are fresh and haven't been out in the last 24 hours. But they made the choice to go back into the battle. And ladies and gentlemen, we've got to make that same choice. Most of you that are here have probably been working. You've been donating. You've been putting out yard signs, maybe making calls, working in the offices. But we've got a choice to make. We're running down to the wire here. And this is about our country. This is about our country for our children and for our grandchildren. And most of us are weary. I've been home one month since January with a few days here, a few days there. Many of us on the Tea Party Express have been out tons doing things in other areas besides what we do here because we want to take our country back. But we can't do it alone. So as you leave here today, would you please evaluate what more you can do for our country? My son gave his final breath for this country. And we've got to take our country back. And when you run into those people who say, I'm not voting this time, I don't like either one of the candidates, would you tell them my son's story? Would you tell them about our other fallen heroes and what they've given for them to have the right to vote? And that it's not just a right, it is a responsibility that we owe to every one of these men and women that stood here today and every one of our fallen heroes. I know that if we stand united and educate people, that we can take this country back. Thank you so much. God bless each one of you and God bless America.